Hello Sagittarius and uh, welcome to the sun sign forecast for July 2016 and I uh, hope that you're all enjoying this new direction um, that I'm presenting with Raising Vibrations. So let's have a look at what's on the chart. Okay, so what we're looking at is the solar cycle for um, the sun moving through Cancer and the solar cycle for the 22nd of June to the 22nd of July 2016. So the sun is transiting through your uh, eighth house of your astrological chart, and this is all about self-empowerment, okay? The sign of, of Scorpio, the sign of the eighth house, is where we metamorphosize ourselves through recognizing our limitations, where we get in touch with the natural state of our um, expression regarding where we get our dreams to manifest from, to be honest. So it's how we seek um, people that symbolize empowerment outside of ourselves, how we merge with that experience, and then how we develop um, through that merging experience the natural capacity to then become that. So it's a very powerful place to be in. There's a lot of obviously uh, deep psychological processing that needs to take place. So I wouldn't be surprised if you find yourself being in a very confrontational and also a very deep penetrative state. Okay, so um, you've got Venus transiting your eighth house of your astrological charts, and this is a big deal too, because as a collective, we're dealing with the symbolism. And then for us individually, for you particularly, it's in your eighth house. So the natural, the natural way in which your relationship dynamics are going to take place is probably going to be through these rational fears of abandonment, loss, and betrayal. And again, the reason why abandonment, loss, and betrayal actually manifests itself through Scorpio is because we tend to attach ourselves to things, like I said, that we as, as most to. But at some point, the evolution of that thing comes to an end. We let go of the process. And it can be very difficult for that to happen because, of course, we don't see with objectivity when that cycle is over. So it has to manifest through its own evolutionary law. So I wouldn't be surprised if you find yourself being in a situation where, unfortunately, somebody passes away or you get that knife's edge experience of life's limited. And it shocks you into a state of, okay, I've got to, got to readjust my states here, etc. So that will be happening for you as well. And um, if we look at Pluto, the overall transit of Pluto for all you Sagittarius, this is through your second house of your astrological chart. So we're going to be dealing with deep unresolved emotions and deep fears around um, uh, your sense of self-worth and abundance and probably what you validate as your creativity and your capacity to be um, self-valued. You know, the Taurus archetype is all about survival. It's all about what are my resources? What do I need, essentially need to get in touch with? What is my dreams? What do I work with? So with Pluto there up until 2024, there's a lot of stuff around the need to getting connected with trust in yourself, trust in your abundance and trust in your sense of self-worth, okay? Now, Neptune is transiting your fourth house of your astrological chart. So that's also dealing with um, deep fears around or deep feelings of hysteria around sensitivity and um, security, right? What constitutes security and safety for you? And on a deeper level, you're actually watching a whole entire sense of self-identity transform for yourself. So this is a big deal when it comes to your home life, comes to your, um, you know, your sort of conditioning regarding your early life parental uh, impressions that you got when you were growing up and what you perceived the world to be and how is that now changing in comparison to the new self-identity that you have. So a very big transition for you there. And uh, Uranus transiting in the fifth house of the astrological charts is also playing out these big um, shocks regarding what is your special destiny? What is your desires? What do you want to do with your life in that sense? How do you want to become empowered? What, what constitutes your dreams in that sense? And, um, you know, again, with Uranus awakening things here with Aries, uh, I would highly recommend following your um, repeating themes, okay? Uranus is all about repeating themes. It's all about getting in touch with what is the core uh, sense of uh, information that's being presented to you that doesn't have this linearity to it, okay? And uh, speaking of linearity, if we go over to Saturn over there, Saturn is all about the boundaries in our consciousness. So if Saturn represents boundaries in consciousness and Uranus represents the existence of things outside of that boundary, then anything that comes to you through flashes of insight are going to be coming in very sporadic ways. And that's your capacity to really get in touch with um, that uh, new direction that might not necessarily make sense to you. 
which is funny because like I said, with Saturn transiting your first house, you're actually developing an entirely new self direction. And this can be tough because it generally comes with the sense of, I just need to go in this direction. I don't know why. Um, and it might be a little bit uh, weird because I have to challenge my fears of security and have to challenge my sense of um, what is right and wrong uh, in regards to my dreams. So that's a big deal. And um, with Mars transiting and making friends with Saturn over the last couple of months, uh, of course, you're dealing with that sense of um, new direction on a more you know, conscious level. It's like, right, I've got to follow this new direction. It's happening for me. Let's do this. Let's do this. But because of the retrograde, of course, it's gone into a 12th house. So there's a, a kind of like retreat back into yourself to, to really surrender and get in touch with what is the ultimate desire. And so this is a big deal for you in that sense. So getting in touch with a, a new evolutionary cycle for yourself, realizing that this is a little bit of hard work and it's going to take some emotional integration and it's going to be very slow. But over a period of time, there's going to be a new sense of direction for you. And this is exciting. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, I just wanted to let you know that the new and full moons are taking place for you on the 4th of July. And this is cancer for all of us. And that's going to initiate the self-empowerment process. And on the 19th of July, we're going to have the full moon take place here in Capricorn. And so that's activating that, that Scorpio Taurus axis of self-reliance and um, emotional dependency, emotional commitment, and of course, uh, vulnerability as well. So it's going to be a big transit for yourself. Okay. Just remember you're safe. You've got the, you've got the stuff. You've got it. It's all good. You will be okay. All right. Awesome. All right, guys, I just want to quickly draw your attention to learn your charts. This is a new way of actually understanding astrology. And uh, in the description below is a link to take you to information on my site about it. And basically what it is, is that you um, book through the site and you send me your birth details, etc. And I'll send you a playlist of about 24 videos of all of the different types of symbols that you have in your chart so that you can learn it for yourself. And then we'll have a 90 minute reading as well for me to answer any questions and to synthesize it as well. So to really get in touch with that soul's journey. All right. Awesome. All right, guys, if this is a first time that you're actually watching this video, um, hit the like and subscribe button. And until then. Mm -hmm.